Welcome viewers, I'm James Katrega, a lecturer in the Department of Nursing, um, Faculty of Health Sciences, Victoria University. Uh, today we're going to look at dangers of self-medication. I will not ask you the meaning of self-medication, but let me first pose a question to you. If your child uh, fell sick, and probably you saw they had a high temperature, and uh, you cannot access a health worker, what will you do? I know a number of you would just rush. Some people actually do go to the uh, drug shop, buy paracetamol to just take away the temperature, the high temperature, and then relax. Or you go to a, a drug shop or a pharmacy, get a number of drugs. That one is for temperature, another one for for prior malaria. They think any any fever is malaria, or somebody may add an antibiotic, or two or three or one. So all that is under dangers of self-medication. Uh, based on that, that we, are, we have just uh, briefed you about, uh, the rationale for this uh, short lecture is in this COVID-19 uh, season, many people are buying unprescribed medication due to limited access to healthcare facilities or professional health workers. This lecture is intended for the, the public to be aware of the dangers of self-medication. Now, uh, self-medication in this respect, uh, the use of medication without prescription uh, of a medical cons consultant or medical doctor is actually self-medication. But WHO has given us a very good definition of self-medication, which actually brings out the key components that we, we shall actually look at that where the dangers lie. It says self-medication is the use of drugs to treat what you have diagnosed yourself, yes, as a self-diagnosed disorder or symptom or the intermittent or concomitant or continued use of prescribed drugs for chronic or recurrent diseases or symptoms. You, what this means, will you prescribe, you, you diagnose yourself, I have malaria, because you are feeling feverish. It could have been due to fatigue, and just taking fluids and fruits and vegetables is enough. And then, or using drugs that they previously gave you for some for similar condition, but you are not sure whether they still work for you. That is self-medication. And uh, it is a danger to the public, uh, individual and the public. So, let's look at the epidemiology of self-medication. Like we've said, self-medication is, is an increasingly frequent phenomena world over. And it's considered a public health problem everywhere in, in, in a number of countries. And in using unprescribed uh, drugs, patients take the responsibility. So when you take any drug that has not been prescribed, you take the responsibility of recognizing that the appropriate indication that you know what you, why you are taking that drug, you know the dosage, yeah, as if you studied it. And you, uh, you know the, the, that when you seek for medical advice, when you get any adverse reaction, yeah? So that is part of uh, uh, self-medication. So it con we continue to say the indiscriminate consumption of drugs has a lot of disadvantages. When you take drugs that have not been prescribed has a lot of disadvantages that may span from increased costs or decreasing the, 
the, the effectiveness of, and efficacy of a drug, so a drug no longer works for you because you've misused it, and increased treatment duration, you are supposed to have been treated for, say, one week, because you took an underdose, you now, they are forced to put you in a stronger drug for a longer period of time. So all those are effects, which my colleague uh, will take you through. So, we now we focus on one of the key areas in self, uh, dangers of self-medication, uh, pointing towards antibiotics. Why antibiotics? Reason, uh, the reason is uh, there is a lot of resistance that may happen, that such a drug may no longer work. So, antibiotic agents, especially antibiotics, are commonly used drugs for self-medication globally. With over 50% of the purchased and used drugs without prescriptions. And uh, that poses a problem, not only to Uganda, but it's world over. In Uganda, a study that was done by doc Dr. Chan in northern Uganda and uh, many other consultants found that uh, over 76% of the drugs and, and antibiotics and, ma and microbials was self-medicated. People did not seek for a prescription from a consultant or a doctor. So that then means that Uganda will have a bigger problem. This is a recent study, 2014. And uh, in his study, he said the most common, commonly treated symptoms in Uganda for self-medication to use the antibiotics. People had fever, like I told you at the beginning. You feel a fever, you take antimalarial. It could be a, a, an infection from a bacteria or a virus. You take antibiotics, uh, antimalarial, it does not cure. Then you say, I think the, 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 this drug no longer works. Yet you have misdiagnosed yourself. Headache is another symptom that it causes many people to seek drugs from uh, drug shops without a prescription. And loss of appetite and body weaknesses. So somebody says, I walk into a drug shop, say, I have body weakness. Then if you find one who is not, uh, who is not a pharmacist, because pharmacists are really technical guys, uh, uh, so they, they sometimes are devised. But if you find one who is not well prepared, they may end up giving a number of drugs to treat the same condition which we shall later know as polypharmacy. And uh, so, uh, so I could pose a question. What do you think are the commonly used drugs to, to self-medicate? You can post the answer on our social media platform. i give you a, a few minutes. The quicker uh, those who are in the disinformation age can drop their answers very fast. So, one of the, 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 the most abused drug in self-medication is Coatem, according to, Prof to Dr. Chan. And it's not, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not new because even the government of Uganda... Uh, gave authority to village health teams to distribute Coatem without uh, a clear prescription or after testing. But now there is a new recommendation, a government revised that, that you first go and they do RDT, that rapid diagnostic test. If they find it positive, then you, they, you, you go to that VHT and they give you Coatem. But it was, as a result of that, misuse of quatem. Previously we had chloroquine which was abused and became resistant that could not 
work anymore on any ma ma uh, malaria patient. Amoxicillin is also sold in drug shops even when in NDA and does not act allow selling of antibiotics in such drug shops. But you find they still sell and you, you viewers access those drugs from there. So, the other is metronidas, which you uh, view our viewers, the public, call flagile. Is all people go they, whenever they feel any stomach upset, say, uh, Give me some flagile, two, ta two tablets. Is that a full dosage? Viewers. Some, the other one is cotomoxazo, which is septrin, which is also abused. Anyone who feels a, a sore throat or a simple cough. Give me some five tablets. I think it will go in one or two days. Not a, an adequate dose. In this COVID-19 era, this is what, what happened. When they announced on the social media that chloroquine can cure COVID-19, many of you went to drug shops and pharmacies to procure to to guard yourself in case they tell you you have been exposed. And that was also accompanied with azithromycin. So that was, they, you didn't have a prescription from a doctor. And you never even had a disease. Do you have it? No. Otherwise you've been in, in, in isolation or in Mlago being treated. So, uh, the other medications that are are uh, 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 self-medicated that the, uh, many other people or you viewers use for self-medication are painkillers, paracetamol, piroxcam, which is some of you give to your rats to kill rats, uh, aspirin. These drugs have lots of side effects that you don't know. You are not technical. For example, paracetamol can damage your liver if you take an improper dose. Aspirin can cause a lot of blood problems. Yes? In as much, that's why nowadays there is limited access to aspirin. But in the past, people used to go and ask for aspirin, 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 without knowledge of how it works and its, uh, its side effects. Others are flu medicines that are self used to self medicate yourself, and then there are lots a return of herbal medicines for cough. I hear this one, the other. I don't want to mention them because uh, I'm not protected enough to mention them. But uh, they are there in the, in the drug shops. People just access them, and without a prescription, probably the NDA will help us in in uh, seeing how that can can be mitigated thanks very much for listening viewers now let's pause a little for a break which when we come back we shall look at factors that may influence people to using drugs without a prescription or to self-medicate themselves so in the meantime you can post your answers to our social media platform on VU platforms. Thanks very much. Welcome back our viewers from a short break. I'm still James Katerega. Now I left a, a, a short question about the factors influencing self-medication. Um, well, we shall read your, your views later. So, uh, allow me to share with you the, some of the factors that have been found to influence self-medication. One is age. The youths, those who are under the youth category, are uh, usually want to go, go and solve things very fast, go and get drugs from drug shops and pharmacies without a prescription. And uh, not knowing the effects of that self-medication, uh, self 
the other is education level. A number of studies have shown that those who are highly educated, including us, health workers, because you studied about the drugs, so you think you're a consultant in drugs, yet they are, the pharmacists also majored in that. And they are also clinical pharmacists. They are consultant physicians who could ably explain to you what you, you don't know. Uh, because you think you know, you, you access. Some of those are these, you uh, who are working class, who can access internet. You go read up a certain drug, a hey, tricks, this and that, say this is the best that matches my signs and symptoms. And you only read the good things. Yet the physician or a doctor will balance, see, depending on the symptoms, would buy and probably they, they also just don't give the drugs. They do a number of tests, they listen to your history, and they then try to judge out. They do the, uh, take samples to make diagnosis, and they also other pot they rule out other causes. They just don't start prescribing. Well, in some limited facilities where it is, they can run some tests, the, the doctor can prescribe based on his clinical knowledge. But you have just read on the, no, on the internet, the guy took five years in, med in medical school studying what you have read in one minute to prescribe yourself drugs. So please, if you have time, uh, it's actually it's not a matter of time, you need to really care about your life go and seek for medical advice. Not because you are uh, educated in your field that you know everything about medicine. The other is uh, family attitude. Sometimes, yeah, some families say, ah, we know that one. Uh, we, we have been start, uh, treating, here we suffer a lot of malaria. Yes? So, or they, they, in the family, for them, they can't go to, the, they don't go to the hospital. They start with the herbal medicine, they get mururuza, bombo, and then if it fails, they go to a drug shop, buy some panado and mix, and then they continue. So that can also endanger. Remember, this is your life you are affecting. The other is uh, the advertising, advertisements from manufacturers. You watch ad 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 advertisements on TV and you see that this advert can easily mislead the, the public. People la say, hey, they can use this to treat this, they go. Yet, they have misdiagnosed themselves. Because there are so many things, like, for example, fever can be caused by a number of conditions. So you cannot look, just watch TV, because somebody has advertised their drug as the best, and then you go and buy it to solve your problem. The other problem is, uh, well, sometimes the, the legislative uh, uh, problems that uh, sometimes uh, the NDA is, uh, it regulates the, the dispensing of drugs. But they may be limited in capacity. We have seen them go into a number of regions trying to enforce, get those who are culprits of selling drugs that are not supposed to sell some of the have actually arrested number of those who are known qualified to, to be in drug shops and pharmacies but uh, uh, somewhere some or some people managed to continue flourishing uh, probably the, the capacities don't have a, 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 a big workforce which probably they, they will still work on it and I'm sure they are working on that um, the other is uh, regarding uh, the illness of as a minor problem. You say, ah, this is a simple fever. So I can get the panel. It will go. I, I, I spend a whole day in, in, in the garden. So this is a fatigue. So you do what? You get panado and sleep off. Little do you know that it is, it, it is actually either malaria or a strong infection. So that's why if you try some drug, say for example, paracetamol for a fever and it persists, you instead rush to the healthcare facility. Don't wait for too long for 
for it to, 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 to progress. Sometimes, uh, one of the other factors is the, the previous experience. People who have suffered from the same condition still assume the same drug can still work on the same d disease or condition. So, you get the previous prescription and say they prescribed when I had the swelling on my leg, the doctor prescribed uh, an anticoagulant, say, um, any anticoagulant. And probably this time it is just an infection, a boil. You take an, an anticoagulant for the boil, which is an infection of, this, of, of the follicles, hair follicle, you start getting bleeding disorders that can lead to many other problems. Please don't get our previous prescription for the new. Yes? Uh, you are not the, 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 the physician. Others, I told you, studied for quite some time. At least consult them. Then they can guide you. Um, sometimes, uh, some people, because, uh, like, we're looking at factors that influence self-medication, people who are suffering from depression and anxiety, I like to use uh, self-medication. In fact, such clients or even those under me, uh, mental health, some of them may not even have insight of what they are taking. Yes? Some of those who are depressed, they, yeah, they can take things. Yeah? Yes. Or oh, are uh, just anxious. Um, sometimes people engage in self-medication because, especially in the villages, the healthcare facilities are far. Or they are unavailable. I one time looked at a, watched a, a talk show on Southern television and uh, showing Karangara that the healthcare facilities are very few. Some people had to take boats from one area to another. I wonder what they are doing during this COVID-19. They are either taking herbs or if they had other leftovers of drugs, they are using those ones because of the unavailability. And I'm sure many of you during this COVID-19, when our president uh, passed some directives that could have limited some of you to accessing healthcare facilities, uh, well, they were good directives meant for control of of COVID-19 and for that we have actually successfully controlled it. We thank our president. But a number of you actually resorted to self-medication. You go to the drug shop nearby because you're feeling something, you just purchase and go. Because you don't want the curfew to find you when you are far and there's no transport anyway. So that actually might have influenced your use of of self-medication. The other is uh, sometimes we lack money to visit uh, these healthcare providers. You said uh, there is a consultation fee. Yet when I go to government where they offer relatively subsidized or free services, they are, the lines are longer and they, they are likely to get stock outs and then the, the doctor may requ require to buy some of the drugs which you, you have not got from the government health care facility. You say, ah, no. I go straight to a drug shop and buy. Yet you don't know that the government has taken doctors who can give you at least a good diagnosis. That you, even if you are to purchase drugs, you clearly know you have been tested and they have given a right diagnosis. So, so in that way, the government health care facilities are very, very important. And anyone, by the way, who advocates for, for who would advocate, may I actually want to fight with that person. 
because they are helpful to those people who can't afford. Yeah. And uh, sometimes uh, people just buy uh, another dose. Yeah. Because uh, they don't have money. So, I, I now want to pose a question. I'm probably, this will end this short session. What, we came to discuss dangers of self-medication. What are those dangers? I'm going to welcome my colleague who will come uh, after this short break, uh, Mr. Shrimina Jimmy, to take you through the dangers of self-medication. Thanks very much for listening and, and watching this show. Welcome, our dear viewers. Uh, we have been taking you through, my colleague has been taking you through um, self-medication and uh, he moved along the way. And with me here, I want us to go through what are the dangers or what we refer to as the potential risks to self-medication, right? Now you could think about some of them and please post uh, your responses to our social media platforms. But uh, with us here, among others, um, our dear viewers, we have one of them is uh, what we refer to as polypharmacy. Now with polypharmacy, you basically have um, a lot of drugs. In other words, you, you have one that takes away your pain, one that probably takes away your um, manage your hypertension, one that basically you have quite an arm of drugs. And uh, the problem that we have there is that Sometimes you have drugs interacting with each other, and as a result, you end up um, actually um, not benefiting from some of these medications because you're self-medicating yourself. Secondly, we have the issue of misdiagnosis and actually mistreatment. Remember, actually, um, I'm reminded of this, uh, this joke that um, there was a note um, on, on, on the hospital's um, entrance at the reception that those people who misdiagnose themselves and mistreat themselves because of some reason or the other probably as a result of internet they will be charged an extra money yeah so you shouldn't do that we don't encourage self medication because you end up um, you end up misdiagnosing yourself and actually you end up mistreating yourself yeah now that takes me uh, to the second point of um, delay in diagnosis remember uh, most of uh, most of our ailments or most of our diseases probably present with signs and symptoms probably you could have pain yeah or you could have uh, maybe um, uh, things like uh, a stomach ache or flu yeah and if uh, if you buy uh, medications and uh, these medications like for example for pain you buy um, a few tablets of uh, paracetamol or maybe diclofenac for that matter then you end, you swallow them and the pain ceases yeah now when the pain ceases it does not necessarily mean that your, your problem or your condition has actually resolved, yeah? So that actually delays the diagnosis, yeah? Or in other words, it delays the doctors or the physicians finding out your problem. And as a result, delay in diagnosis actually has delayed or it actually has consequences, yeah? So we don't encourage um, the issue of self-medication. Then incorrect treatment, you could, uh, you could read some information of the internet and probably want to, to treat yourself. Actually, one of, uh, that reminds me, what one of my doctors actually says that there is no competition between the physician and the internet. Yeah? Well, however much you go and read off the internet, it doesn't make you a physician. So it is very important that you, you, you don't self-medicate or you don't, um, read uh, information of the internet and then you end up buying medication for yourself, yeah? Because that will eventually lead to what we refer to as incorrect treatment, yeah? And also incorrect dosages. You don't know how much to take, yeah? And how often you should take it and what, what should you follow, yeah? What are the restrictions to follow as to when you are taking this particular kind of medication, yeah? So those are some of the potential risks 
or potential dangers to self medication but we also have others issues that have to do with toxicity yeah um, toxicity and side effects of some drugs yeah, you might read information of the internet or maybe um, take a, a few pics of what worked for your colleague and maybe you want to buy it for yourself, but you're unaware of the side effects. This is very, very important. Yeah, we ought to always get a physician's or a doctor's um, um, consult or a doctor's idea when we are taking um, certain medications. Now, we should also know that there are some rare conditions or rare side effects that are actually severe these are rare but it does not necessarily mean that they actually cannot happen yeah so you find yourself probably you 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 you're, you're reactive or you're allergic to particular medications and it ends up you know having uh, severe side effects on you yeah so um other than doing other than self-medicating yourself you might want to probably uh, visit the doctor or the physician for that matter yeah, a lack of uh, effectiveness, uh, in other words, um, um, you might buy a drug and, and probably it is not effective and probably you think you, might, you, you think you want to increase the dose, yeah, and when you increase the dose, you end up in toxicities, yeah, so this is very, very um, bad, right? Now, um, we have others, there are medications, uh, medications abuse or dependency. Yeah, there are some people who actually buy medications from the pharmacy without a prescription. And, um, and as a result, they become dependent or they start abusing these medications, right? Now, masking of an underlying severe um, health condition, yeah, this is what we are saying, that you might buy uh, medication and it takes away some of the symptoms or si some of the s symptoms that you're actually experiencing or signs and then you think you have cured from the condition and yet the condition is actually eating you from inside yeah so we do not encourage um, self-medication failure to recognize uh, any contraindications like for example when you when when you go um, off the internet or when a friend of yours advises you to buy a particular kind of medication without visiting the physician or the doctor you might not be aware of uh, what we call the contraindications or or those things that uh, uh, against which you must not take the medication right so if you're unaware of those things against which you must not take the medication then it will have severe side effects in you yeah now that is very very um bad of a problem um and lastly we have um things like uh, drug resistances in other words, uh, this is very common with, uh, with antibiotics yeah? and some antimalarials. Yeah? Uh, you buy this medication, you keep on using it, and with time, your body gets used. Yeah? And uh, you know your body becomes resistant uh, to, this, uh, to this medication. And also increment in drug-induced diseases. Yeah? There, are some, there are some diseases that are actually increased by, um, by particular drugs. Yeah? So you don't want to, to do that, yeah? Now, with me, I want to, to share with you an experience from a, a well-known um, doctor, yeah, who, who, is, uh, who was actually working at Molago um, National Referral Hospital by then. And uh, he actually says that one of the reasons as to why um, um, treatment of malaria in, in our country has not uh, been very effective or we always change medication from one to another is because of self-medication. Yeah? He actually notes that um, if, uh, if, if, uh, if patients or if people would not self-medicate themselves then probably you'd have advancements in, uh, in research as far as um, uh, management of um, of uh, malaria is concerned but because people are self-medicating themselves then it it uh, it has created some kind of resistance yeah and for that matter um, management of malaria in Uganda has actually gone through um, a, 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 a successive kind of like uh, a little bit of issues because of uh, the issue of uh, self-medication which goes uh, with resistance to these um, medications right now the second thing, the, the second thing that is very important that I want us to know is um, how to avoid such, um, you know, how, how, how best can you avoid uh, uh, the issue of self-medication, right? Right. So, um, 
Well, there are so many um, ways how you can avoid um, um, issues that have to do with uh, self-medication, among which uh, you could uh, freely um, air out um, on our social media platforms. But uh, with us, uh, we have uh, a few, quite a few. And one of them is, uh, is uh, one, do not take uh, medication that has actually not, uh, not been prescribed by the doctor. Yeah. In other words, make sure that you always visit uh, your physician or your doctor in case you have uh, any issues. Then, if you cannot, then pr please ask um, the pharmacist or doctor's advice yeah? uh, in case of uh, medications that do not require any prescription. You know, there are some medications that might not necessarily require any prescription, like uh, what we refer to as the over-the-counter drugs. But in, in case of that, still ask for views or advice from a pharmacist, a well-trained pharmacist, or a doctor, yeah, concerning that, yeah. Then the other one, if self-medication, um, if, uh, if uh, self-medication must have a reason, uh, duration, must have a reasonable duration. In other words, um, self-medic, do not self-medicate forever, even for uh, chronic, you know, chronic illnesses. No, there should be a specific duration. If symptoms continue, then you need to consult, you know, the physician or you need to visit the, the nearby health facility. Then always inform um, the doctors of all the medications that uh, have been taken. In other words, um, you need to, to, to inform your doctor of, of all the medications that you're actually taking so that the doctor can well know in case of any contraindications or any interactions with other medications, then that would be um, very well um, known. Then the other one, um, for those who are able to call um, your doctors or your physicians during this COVID um, season, please do, yeah? Please do that, uh, consult them because um, this will actually be very, very um, helpful. Read and keep the packages, um, the packages uh, leaf, um, leaflets of all the medications that you have been given from the pharmacy or even from the hospital. And then avoid, this is very important, yeah? Just like they say, um, cars and, and alcohol do not mix the same way. Medication and alcohol do not do not mix, right? So please avoid drinking alcohol um, whenever you're taking any particular kind of medication because uh, you realize um, that uh, um, alcohol actually interacts with almost 99% of the drugs that are common for our um, for our ailments. Yeah. A point to note. Um, do not swallow drugs without uh, a clear explanation of what it is treating. Yeah, most of us have this problem. They just say, do this, take, swallow this, you know, uh, maybe take this uh, two times a day, but you actually don't know what it is actually treating. So please do not go ahead. Ask, yeah, ask the prescriber or ask the, the pharmacist what it is actually um, supposed to be treating. And then, you know, it is your life, yeah and the life of your loved ones that is actually being put in danger. So if you do self-medicate, you are actually putting the life of your, your, your very life and the life of your loved one in, in danger. Um, with, uh, with that, I want to thank you so much um, for having given us uh, audience. And uh, before we conclude, um, I, I want to pose a question. You know, um, what's, what are other adverse effects that you have probably noticed in the community that, uh, that, are, being, um, that are out there as a result of self-medication? Please feel free to post this information on one of our social media platforms um, at Victoria University, and then we shall definitely get back to you. Thank you so much.